All right. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. It's Apostle Dukes. Bless the Lord on my soul and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. God bless everybody tonight. Come on in, no matter where you are, no matter where you're from, all over the world. Get in the word of God. Let's learn the word of God. Let's grow in the word of God tonight. Amen. 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 God bless you all tonight. Hallelujah. Come on in. Let me know you're here. Blessings of the Lord to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me tag a few people here. Glory to God. God bless you tonight. Come in. Amen. With honor and thanksgiving for the Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah for the Lord Jesus Christ. He is King of Kings and he is Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. 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 Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord for his goodness. Amen. Blessings to you all. Glad to see you come in. Prophet is Willis. Hey, how you doing? Amen. Sir Allison. Glory to God. James Jones. Anthony. Hello, sir. Prophetess Colbert, blessings to you. Minister Oakman, Mama Dukes, hello, hello. Let me see. I was a little bit brighter earlier, and I don't know what happened. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, all ye saints. Hallelujah. Give God the glory, honor, and the praise. Amen, amen. Well, I don't know what happened to it. Thank God for all of you tonight as you come in. Amen. We bless the Lord, oh, my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for your word tonight. Glory to God. Thank you for your promises tonight. Thank you for your goodness tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you for your loving kindness. Glory to God. I don't have any music tonight because Facebook just loves to shut me down So when I play music. So we're not even going to go down that road. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of the Lord. Thank you, Father. We worship you tonight. We praise you tonight. Hallelujah. We come with the sacrifice of praise. Hallelujah. Into your house, Father. Oh, God, we praise you tonight for your loving kindness, wherewith you have drawn us tonight. Glory to God. Glory to God. Father, we praise your holy name, Lord God, that you are doing extraordinary things in our life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, what you're doing, no man, no woman, no boy, no girl could do, only you. And we praise you tonight. Hallelujah. We worship you tonight. Oh, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We bless you tonight. Thank you, Lord. Come on. He is the great I am. He is the King of Kings. He is the mighty one. He is the great ruler. Yes, Lord, in our lives. And we praise God tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Father, we thank you for your anointing tonight. We thank you for your spirit and your word tonight. Father, we know that this thing will be done not by our might, not by our power, but by your spirit. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Set the captive free tonight. Oh, God, open up our blinded eyes, Father. Set us free. Heal our hearts tonight, Father. Pour in the anointing oil of your spirit, Lord. Pour in, hallelujah. Father, the healing balm of Gilead. Let it, Lord, soothe our souls tonight. Bring forth healing. Bring forth salvation. Bring forth deliverance. Bring forth every need met in the name of Jesus. And God, we will praise you tonight. We will glorify you tonight. We will honor you tonight for all that you say and do in our midst in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 God bless everybody tonight. Amen. Bless bless you tonight as you come in. Share the video if you would. Tag someone. Amen. I believe the Lord has a word for us tonight. I believe the Lord will speak to our spirit tonight. Amen. And uh, I just been meditating on this word. And so I want to share with you what the Lord is saying. Amen. 
what the Lord is saying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, when the Lord wants to bring forth something to his people, amen, we must be willing vessels to honor God. Amen. Hallelujah. We must be willing vessels to honor the Lord and to speak what thus said the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So uh, that's what we're going to do. Hallelujah. That's what we're going to do. We're going to speak what thus said the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. And tonight the Lord has uh, been is speaking some things in our spirit. Amen. And we want to uh, share those with you. Hallelujah. We want to share those with you and just see whatever God wants to do. Lord, you can have your way. Amen. You can have your way. Have your way. You know, we've been ministering from the topic of um, healing. Healing. Amen. Um, and that God wants us healed. And healing belongs to the body of Christ. Amen. Healing belongs to the body of Christ. Isn't that right? Amen. The Lord desires for you to be healed. I'm going to say it again for somebody that needs to hear it. The Lord desires for you to be healed. Amen. The Lord desires for you to walk in every promise that he has made in your life. Amen. And over your life. Hallelujah. You know, um, we... Hallelujah, have been uh, through life circumstances, through life situations, through uh, breakups and letdowns and put downs and all of those things um, and sicknesses and diseases. But the Lord, again, desires for us to be made whole. And I um, issued to PLC, y'all know I'll give out things from time to time. I issued out a prescription of the word of God that you can use to speak over yourself, amen, or to speak over yourself and to release over yourself the word of God that's able to bring forth healing. And so on Sunday, uh, we went through the word and we, uh, uh, we spoke the word, we declared the word, we preached the word, we prophesied the word, we prayed the word, amen, to bring about healing in the lives of God's people. Hallelujah. Yes, this is your healing prescription. Now, if you, if you need one, amen, if you need one, you can, I can send you one um, via your email. So you can message me your email and I'll email you one. Or if you'll be in service on Sunday, I will, um, I will uh, give you a hard copy. You just let, let, let me know. Hallelujah. So uh, the Lord is our healer. The Lord is our healer. And so we've been working on that. And, and Okay, DeMarcus. Yes, sir. I'll make sure you get one. Uh, how you doing? Amen. I'm glad y'all came in tonight. So uh, the Lord began to, so I take this word, these scriptures, and I begin to pray them over myself. Your healing is activated through the word of God. Amen. And we can talk about all the things Amen. That, um, you know, the enemy is, you know, moved by. But one of the things that, that Satan, the enemy, sickness, any spirit is moved by is the authority and power that's in your vessel that's in the word of God. So speak the word. We talked on Sunday about the centurion soldier says to Jesus, Jesus, don't come to my house, but speak the word only. And my servant will be healed. Speak the word only in my service. Be healed. So there's power in the word of God. Um, if you look in your Bibles, if you look in your Bibles in St. John chapter number six, and I just want to continue to lay this foundation in your spirit. Amen. In John chapter six, verse 63, the word of God declares, it is the spirit. It is the spirit that quickened it. I want you to see the spirit of God brings life. The Spirit of God brings life. Hallelujah. The Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost living on the inside of you, quickens your mortal body. Quickens your mortal body. Quickens your, your life. Look at this. He says, makes it alive. He says, it is the Spirit that quickens it. The flesh profiteth nothing. The flesh will not profit you one single thing. He says, but the words that I speak unto you, 
They are spirit and those words are life. So Jesus began to say to his disciples, say to the people, if you want to live, if you want to walk in healing, you want to walk in deliverance, you want to walk in breakthrough, you want to walk in what I have made available to you, understand that it is done by the spirit and by the words that I speak unto you, those words are spirit and those words are life. And so as I begin to pray the word over myself and speak the word over my body and command my body to come into alignment with the word of God, sometimes you got to command your body, command your soul, command your spirit. You know, we sing that song. I command my soul to praise the Lord. I command my hands. I command my feet. I command everything about me to praise the Lord, right? So you got to command your body, your mind, your emotions your life, what? Uh, uh, to obey the word of God. It may not want it. There's the, the scripture that says that the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So the spirit is always willing, but that flesh man does not want to do what it's told to do. Amen. Can I get somebody that know what I'm talking about? That flesh man no, uh, don't want to do what it's supposed to do. Hallelujah. It don't want to do what it's supposed to do. It want to be rebellious. It want to be tired. It want to be tired. It want to be lazy. It wants. It doesn't don't want to do what it what it's supposed to do. But the Bible says that the flesh is is weak, but the spirit is willing. The spirit is ready. Amen. To do what it's supposed to do. But we must command our bodies to line up with the Word of God. You must command your life to line up with God's word. As a believer, as a saint of God, as a child of the Most High, you must command your body to line up with God's word and refuse to back down until you see the manifestation of what you are believing God for. Whether it's physical healing, whether it's emotional healing, whether it is financial breakthrough, whether it is your children saved, delivered, sanctified, amen, whether it's a, a, a godly spouse or husband, whether it's God to rescue you out of a situation, if it's for a new job, it might be for a new career path, it might be whatever. You might have a boss that, that, that's just giving you a run for your money. Whatever it is, you can take the word of God and you can begin to wield the sword of the spirit. And that is the word of God. You have a sword and that sword is the word of God. And so as I begin to speak the word of myself, this particular scripture is on our prescription. It's on our list of prescriptions that we can speak. And it's Psalms 147 and verse number three. So let's look at Psalms 147. Hallelujah. Psalms 147. I want to show you this because... I believe that this particular spot is one of the reasons that hinder us from seeing the fullness of God's healing in our life. And I want us to have everything that God promised us. Amen. Somebody put that in the, in the comments. Psalms 147. Psalms 147. Sometimes we're in cycles. Sometimes we're in cycles that we don't know how to get out of, how to break, how to overcome. Um, and so herein lies, amen, some answers for us and some deliverance in Jesus' name. Amen. So, Psalms 147, verse number 3. Hallelujah. Well, we'll start verse one, you know, just for, but it says, praise ye the Lord for it is good to sing praises unto our God for it is pleasant and praise is comely. Praise is appropriate. Yes, it is. He says, the Lord does build up Jerusalem. That's you and me. He gathered together the outcasts of Israel. Thank God that he have gathered that together the outcasts of Israel. Look at what verse number three says. Verse number three says he healeth the broken in heart and bind it up their wounds. I'm going to read it to you again because it's very easy to skip past this, this verse. He healeth the broken in heart 
and he binds up their wounds. Okay? Uh, in the Amplified Version, the Amplified Bible says, he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds, curing their pains and their sorrows. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And as I begin to read that, and, and pray that over myself, amen, the Lord began to show me that many of us are locked down right there in a place of woundedness and brokenness, brokenness, Wo broken in heart, amen, broken in, in spirit, broken in mind, emotions may be broken, now, I know this, you know, this might be a shock to some of you that I'm ministering this, but I'm just coming to tell you what the Holy Ghost said. Amen. And I begin to pray over myself. Amen. And, and, and pray for healing in my own life, in my own spirit, my own emotions, my own uh, life, where God wants to bring forth healing in those various areas. And one of the things about this life that we are living in, the natural life, this natural world, we we pick up wounds. We end up broken and broken in heart and broken in, in emotion and broken in all kind of ways. Can I get anybody that understands what I'm saying? If you're walking in this life, you are going to have some brokenness, some 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 shattered. Uh, hearts, some shattered where somebody didn't treat you right, somebody didn't do you right, somebody didn't love you right, uh, your expectations were not met, right? Expectations were not met. They told you they were going to be there and they didn't turn out to be what they thought or what you thought or what they said. All of these things have a tendency to leave wounds and brokenness. They have a tendency to leave wounds and brokenness that what I like to say, my wife, wife and I both like to say, it end up being trauma, traumatic experiences, traumatic experiences that ultimately lead to um, uh, even greater bondages, right? Hey, Bishop. Hey, Bishop Franklin. I love you, Dad. Good to see you. I got to call you. Amen. So it, it leads to... Uh, brokenness and trauma and these traumatic experiences. You might have a traumatic experience you went through as a child, even as an adult. Don't have to be just in your childhood, but even as an adult, uh, it may be a traumatic experience. These things, uh, uh, it may be traumatic relationships with your mother, with your father, with your aunt. You may have been molested. You may have been uh, abused, sexually abused. You may have been um, uh, uh, you know, taking advantage of those things create brokenness within us. And what it does, it ultimately ends up manifesting itself in various ways, such as unforgiveness, such as bitterness. Come on. Unforgiveness is a bitter root. Come on, somebody. Amen. It leads to those things. Unforgiveness. It leads to bitterness. Amen. And, uh, and eventually what we see is it can lead to actually, yes, fear. Thank you. Fear. Yes. You can have all kind of phobias and all kind of fears. I mean, I was reading a book one day and they began to talk about the different fears. I'm just saying fear of all kinds of stuff. Fear of light. Fear of the dark. Fear of cars. Fear of airplanes. Fear of, 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 of uh, you know, being closed in. Fear of, uh, uh, of the public. Yes, and, and that's right, Providence Willis. It ultimately leads to, yes, taboo, hatred, sickness in our body, and which ultimately leads us to death and, and definitely can to, to the pits of hell. Uh, but God wants to bring healing in those areas of our life. Some people are dealing with sicknesses that are rooted in broken heartedness, in a broken heart. Uh, many people are dealing with sickness that are rooted in a broken heart. And I just came to tell somebody that God is able and that God is willing, amen, to heal your broken heart. Amen. 
And he wants to, yes, mother dudes, he wants to bring forth, amen, and wants you to forgive. And he wants to release that same forgiveness into your life, amen, so so that you can be forgiven. And the person you holding on unforgiveness to can be forgiven and released. Right, yes, absolutely, Prophet's Code. It will bring forth sickness and disease. It will bring forth discouragement. Selena, you said it right. You are able to cast those cares and those brokenheartedness. Let me tell you something. You can go through a trial. You can go through a tribulation. You can go through a test that can be so challenging that it, it can leave you shattered. I don't have nobody that understand what I'm talking about. It can literally leave you shattered. Amen. And, and, and of course, that's what the enemy desires because the Bible says that the thief cometh, John 10, 10, the thief cometh to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus says, I am come that they might have life and of course that they might have that life more abundantly. There are things that you can go through, relationships that you might have been in that can leave you shattered. Amen. And leave you in a million pieces just scattered all about. And sometimes we don't understand why we're doing the things we're doing, why we have the habits we're having, why do we say the things that we say, why do we have this this uh, uh, type of dysfunction in our life. And it could very well be because of some broken hardness, some trauma, some abuse, some whatever down deep, deep down in our soul. And I believe God wants to bring healing to that because that thing could be, yes, Tabberta is leaving you deformed and deficient and is leaving you in a place of disease, disease. It's leaving you in a place of disease. And so uh, he says he will heal the broken hearted. He will heal the broken hearted. God will heal the broken hearted. Amen. God will heal the broken hearted. God will bind up their wounds. Jesus said this in Luke, in Luke, um, in Luke chapter number four, in Luke chapter number four, I just come to, I come to encourage somebody tonight. Um, and, and yeah, that's right. It comes from a trauma and it's coping. And yes, a lot of the things we do, uh, are coping mechanisms with trauma that have been, uh, uh, you know, manifested in our life, but God wants to bring healing in those areas. God wants to bring freedom. God wants to bring release. He sent his son, Jesus, to bring release, to bring freedom, to bring healing. Amen. And those sicknesses, those disease that's rooted in, uh, in those, in that unforgiveness, rooted in that trauma. Um, you know, I, I watch a lot of times I watch, um, I watch a show called Hoarders. I don't know if y'all have ever seen that. And all the time, me and my wife, we always, you know, whenever we watch it, um, I watch, probably watch it more, but when I do watch it or when we watch it together, um, she will say, she will always ask before they get to that part, of course, because we know there's trauma there. She always asks, uh, I wonder what triggered this because a lot of the people, they, they, uh, all before some event happened in their life, they, they didn't have a problem hoarding. They didn't, you know, they were quote unquote normal. I'm saying normal for lack of a better term, but they were quote unquote normal. They didn't have an issue with hoarding. You know, they were, you know, fine. But when some traumatic experience happened, some, it might've been the death of a loved one, might've been the death of a husband, death of a mother. And we oftentimes see that on those shows. And oftentimes what it is, that trauma triggers uh, and, and it becomes, like you said, a coping mechanism to try to uh, soothe their hurt and soothe that trauma um, and, and soothe that broken heartedness and soothe that place of, of pain, that wound. Amen. But God says that I have I have a cure for the wounding. I have a cure for the grief, that broken heartedness uh, to be cast down. Uh, you know, you've ever, you, God has promised you so many wonderful things, people of God. God has promised you, God has empowered you with, with his very life, with everything that he is. He's given it unto you. He's given it unto me. I mean, all of God's power is now resident in the body of Christ, in the people of God. 
And, and, and I really believe that it would be a horrible shame to, uh, the cross of Christ for us, amen, to, to, to live life and never walk in, uh, uh, the full ability of what God has ordained and what God has already given unto you. It's not something that God is, uh, withholding from you or that God doesn't want you to have. No, he says, I've given it to my children. These are my children. These are my people. Uh, 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 Lala, that's my daughter. Uh, Selena, that's my daughter. Jenny, that's my daughter. James, that's my son. Demarcus, that's my son. These are my children. And I, and I've already made the way for my children and already given them. The Bible says that God has given us everything we need. Everything we need or everything that pertaineth to life and godliness. Think about that. God has already given you, made available to you everything, not some things, everything that pertaineth to life and godliness. So if I've been battered by the storm, my Lord. Anybody been battered by the storm? I've been battered by the storm. I've been cast down. You know, dejected. Uh, oftentimes we see depression. We see uh, 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 downward, down in spirit, uh, downcasted, downhearted, droopy, uh, 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 you know, heartbroken, heart sick, heart sore, heavy hearted, uh, inconsolable, joyless. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. And the circumstance that you've been through Although it is what you've been through and what we've experienced through the through life and through trials and through tribulations are very real, they are not more real than God and they are not more powerful than the blood of Jesus Christ. Can I get somebody to say amen? Nothing you've been through is more powerful than the God that we serve. Am I right? Amen. Amen. Nothing we've been through is more powerful than the God that we serve. Absolutely nothing. Jesus said in Luke chapter four, in Luke chapter number four, verse number 18. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yes, we must know that he's in the storm with us. Hallelujah. Yes, he is. Even in the midst of the storm, he's with us. The Bible says in Luke chapter number 18, he says, Jesus said this. He says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Watch this. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he have anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Look at what Jesus said. I'm anointed to preach the gospel to the poor. And, to, and he sent me. I've been sent by God. Hallelujah. To heal the broken hearted. To heal the broken hearted. Uh, look at that. Jesus recognized that part of his assignment was to heal the brokenhearted, to heal those that had been uh, shattered into pieces by, by life, by trials, by the enemy, had been shattered. Um, I don't know if you remember, but you remember when Jesus was eating with the, with the, uh, with the sinners. He was eating with the sinners. Glory to God. Yes, his blood is sufficient to murder. Amen. When he was eating with the sinners, they invited him into the house and Jesus went in and sat with them and ate and partake and ministered to them. And the Sadducees and all these people, the religious people, were so upset that Jesus went and sat with, with sinners or common folk, amen, and, and the sick people. And they said, look at this. Look at this man. He goes and sit with the unclean. He goes and sit with the sinners. And, and Jesus responded and Jesus said, I didn't come for those who were already righteous. He says, I didn't come for those who were already healed. I came for those who needed a doctor. Isn't that something? Jesus said, I came for those who were sick because I'm a doctor. So I came for the sick people. Hallelujah. That's yes. That is why he was sent. He said, I came for those who were broken. Hallelujah. I came for the, I didn't come for the righteous. I came for the sinner. I didn't come for those who were already healed. I came for the sick. And, and Jesus recognized his assignment. I came because I'm a healer. 
I am a healer. That's what Jesus said. I am healing. And I came to touch those who were sick. Amen. And those who were brokenhearted. Now, what he said right here, he says he sent me to heal. God sent me to heal the brokenhearted. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He sent me to bind up their wounds. He sent me, remember, on this prescription I gave you, it says to heal. That means to cure. He came to cure me. He came to get rid of my disease. He came to, 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 uh, uh, to get rid of, to bring about a solution. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He came to bring about a solution to my issue. Glory to God. A, 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 a resolve. A, a, a complete healing. Glory to God. Amen. And, and, and thank you, Holy Ghost. This just rang up in my spirit, just like the man who waited at the pool of Bethesda in John chapter number five. Glory to God. He waited at the pool of Bethesda for 38 years. He had been in a sick place. He had been in a place and that man was broken hearted. You know how I know he was broken hearted? Because when Jesus came to him and Jesus said, why are you sitting here? I can imagine the man might have been sobbing. He said every time the angel come down and the, and the, and the, uh, uh, the pool is troubled or the water is troubled. He says, somebody gets in the pool before me and I don't have nobody to put me in the water. See, the man knew when the angel came down and troubled the water at the pool of Bethesda uh, with the five porches, Grace. Uh, uh, he says, I need somebody to put me in that pool because my healing was in the pool. But Jesus showed up. What was in the pool showed up. What was greater than the pool showed up. And Jesus said, take up your bed and walk, man of God. Get up. I came to heal your broken heartedness. And let me tell you something. When God heals your broken heartedness, you can better believe God has also healed your physical body. Yes. Yes. Imagine having been in that state for 38 years. For 38 years. Yes. Come on. Drop me through the roof. Yes. Come on. Amen. For 38 years having been in that situation. And, and think about the mental struggle that he had. The, the hurt that he had. Think about the man that was blind from birth. Think about it. They were asking questions. Jesus, why was this man born blind? Was it the sin of his mother? Was it the, what? Yes, we need to pull up a feather again. I agree, Pastor Nicky. I agree, baby. Um, he says, uh, uh, um, I forgot what I was saying. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Anyway, he is our healer. Amen. Jesus Christ is our, he's the pool of Bethesda. He is that healing. Yes, he's that living water. Amen. And he's ready, willing to make you every whit whole. Amen. And we can say it. We can say it. We can speak it over ourselves. We can decree it over ourselves. We can believe God. Amen. And we can declare over ourselves and those who are around us, we can command them to be thou made whole. The Lord can pour his healing anointing, his healing oil, his healing virtue down in, in the depths of your soul. Yes, he can. And he can make you whole. That's right. Yes. Amen. He can make you whole. So he heals us. He heals. He brings about a cure. He makes us whole. He is the physician. And the physician comes to, he comes to what? To attend to his patients. To attend to those. He came to bring repair. He comes to make helpful. He comes to mend by stitching. And see, that's what God wants to do. He wants to stitch up the broken places. He wants to prepare. Come on. He wants to make it better than it was before. Hallelujah. He wants to make it better. Yes. Amen. He wants to heal the broken hearted. He wants to heal you from that divorce. He wants to heal you from that, that, that sexual abuse. He wants to heal you from... Amen. Whatever you got going on in your life, he wants to bring healing. He wants to bring deliverance. Amen. He has brought it through his son, Christ Jesus. Yes. Come on. You can take a dip tonight in the pool, in the river. Amen. You ought to step in by faith. Step in the pool. Step in the pool of Bethesda. Step in and be thou made whole. Step in and be healed. Step in and be delivered. Your deliverance. Yes, come on. Your renewal. 
your restoration, your reconstruction, your repair, your rebuilding is available to you right now in the spirit. Come on, somebody, if you are able to, I want you to physically take a step into the pool. Take a step by faith. It, amen. By faith in the spirit. Come on. We can't command our body to obey the word of God. I'm stepping in to the healing river of God. Amen. That I may be made whole. That I may be healed. Amen. The sickness and disease and infirmity have no right. Absolutely no right to our bodies and to our lives. We declare it tonight in the name of Jesus. I step in into the water. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I am a whole. Come on. That that uh, 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 Some people carry about with them a spirit of dread and everything is dreadful and everything is gloom and doom and everything is, is, is tired and weighed down. Everything is a low, low spirit and, and just unhappy and a sad song. Come on, in the name of Jesus, I just declare and, and, and release over you tonight. Come on, for the spirit of joy, I rebuke the spirit of sorrow and grief and depression. Amen. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. And I just declare healing and declare uh, deliverance and declare the joy of the Lord. May the joy of the Lord be your strength. Hallelujah. Come on. I'm telling you, the sun is coming out. The sun is coming out. On your behalf, hallelujah. Oh, glory to God, hallelujah. The sun is coming out, amen, amen. The joy of the Lord, I declare that you will, amen, have jubilee, jubilee in your life, glory to God, hallelujah, amen, jubilee, amen. That thing that hindered you and stopped you, amen, it'll no longer stop you, it'll no longer hinder you, it'll no longer, amen, keep you locked down. Glory to God. Some of us can't love right. Some of us can't love right. Because why? Because of trauma. Because of brokenheartedness. But I believe God, amen, is a restorer. I believe God is a healer. Amen. And let that healing manifest in you. He says he was sent to bring forth healing. He was sent to heal the brokenhearted. He was sent to bind up their, their wounds. To bring about a cure. To stitch up. Amen. Amen. Come on. And you can release, you can be forgiven, and you can receive forgiveness. Amen. Amen. God will empower you. God will empower you. He'll deliver you from every bitter root down in your spirit. Come on. Every bitter root. You might have a bitter root. I I'm going to say this, glory to God. You might have a bitter root in your life, in your, in your soul. You might not even know. You might have a bitter root in your soul for men. You might have a bitter root in your soul against women, for women. You might not even know it, but you might not be able to relate or get along or, or associate really good with the opposite sex, and that thing is a bitter root. But I believe God can bring healing. And you need healing. We need healing. Why? Because we want to operate in the fullness of what God has already promised us and made available to us in our life. Amen. At Prophet's COVID land. Amen. God, God wants to bring here. You might have a bitter root in you. Y'all know I'm talking, right? You might have a bitter root down in there that God wants to get out. Amen. Come on. De Roshatara de Basoranda. God wants to bring healing in your spirit. Come on. I ain't going to let nothing and nobody. Come on, somebody, keep me from work, work, working the works of Christ, from walking in the fullness of God. I ain't gonna let no bitter root. Come on, that's right, Selena. Burn up the bitter root, uh, uh, the bitter root. Burn up uh, uh, the word of God says that He will pluck out every root that He did not plant. I pray in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, God, we yield the bitter roots to you. Oh, God, we yield the bitter roots to you in our life, in our spirit, in our souls. Father, that's got us, got us twisted. That's got us locked down, Father. And, Lord, we pray that you will uproot every bitter root. Come on, every bitter root against, amen, in our life. Uh, uh, Lord, a bitter root against our parents. Bitter roots against our spouses. Bitter roots against our ex-spouses. Bitter roots against our families. Bitter roots again, even, even when it comes to wealthy people, bitter roots. Some of us got bitter roots about money because we swindle. We just, we just, we just abuse money. 
uh, uh, bitter roots in us. God, I thank you for healing and deliverance in the name of Jesus. Listen, God means for you to be healed and delivered in every area, in every way of your life. God bless you, my brother, Apostle Ben. God, oh, come on here. You know, you took the word out of my mouth. Some of us got bitter roots against pastors. Now, prophet, you talking right. Hey, Apostle Ben. Hey, brother, my brother in the Lord. Amen. Some of us got bitter roots against pastors. Absolutely. We got bitter roots against authority. Against authority. Specifically, the authority that comes from God. Amen. And, 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 and so, we, we find ourselves rebelling and pulling against. Amen. What God says against God's leadership. Against God's authority. Amen. Uh, uh, so, just bitter roots. And God wants... Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. <clears throat> Ooh, help the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and we know all of the injustice in the world. Amen. It, it, with police brutality and things like that. And I'm not talking about that. But us as black people could have a bitter root against police, uh, against law enforcement. And, 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 and you, can, you can talk about whether it's justified or not and all that kind of stuff. But let me tell you something. That thing has the potential to lock us down. Amen. To lock us down for all the history and all of that. And we know the trauma and experiences. Come on. And we've got to begin to understand, amen, that God want to bring healing to us as a people. Amen, somebody. Amen. Don't get quiet on me right now. Amen. God wants to bring healing in our spirits in our souls, when it comes to authority, when it comes to, come to law enforcement, God wants to bring healing. And I want to be healed. I, for one, want to be healed. Amen. I want to be healed. I don't care. I don't care how deep it go. I want to be healed. Amen. Come on. And, and, and I don't, the things that happen back there, the things that's happening, the, the injustices, yes, there are injustices. Yes, they need to be dealt with. Yes, we need to fight the injustices. Absolutely. But let me tell you something. When the end of you, watch the bitter root. Watch the bitter root. Now, I'm trying to tell you because the enemy will sow seeds. The enemy will sow seeds into your spirit, into your soul. Right? That's why you got to be careful. What you allow in your spirit, man, and in your soul, you got to be careful of the influence because why? That, that, that seed, once the seed get planted, my God, all it takes is a seed. You see, all it takes is a seed. I was watching this video last night, right? I was watching this video on YouTube, and I'm not going to go into the full detail of what the video, what video was, uh, but I was watching this video and uh, it was a video of, a, it was an interview that a lady was having with another lady. And the lady began to talk about, uh, she asked the lady, what did she do for a living? And the lady said that she was a, a sex, uh, a sex goddess. And I listened to the lady talk for about one minute, about one whole minute, right? <laughs> The lady, the lady was talking. She was talking about she was a sex goddess and, and the things that she do and how she became a sex goddess. I listened to it for one minute, one minute, and the lady was licking her lips all sensually and, and everything. And I, I, I was quick. I was mindful that I need to turn that video off. <laughs> I was mindful. I need to turn it off because I said I began to say, you know what? I can't allow I I can't allow that to go no deeper into my spirit, into my soul, into my emotions. Because why? <laughs> Come on, hear somebody. I had to turn it off. Apostle Apostle Ben. O F F off. Off. I had to turn it off because I had to be mindful that what it, I'm allowing this in my spirit. Y'all see me right here acting crazy. The devil is a liar. Mm -mm. The devil is a liar. So you got to be mindful what you allow in your spirit. Because why? It's, produ it's sowing a seed into your soul that eventually, at some point, you might not even think about it. It might be a little ways down the road. 
But that root, that seed is going to bring up a harvest. It's going to bring, it's going to develop, a, it's going to develop a root down within you. And before you know it, you're going to be doing things and you're going to be saying things and you're going to be desiring things that come on somebody that is not from the Lord. And do I have any witnesses? Come on. Amen. And so God wants to bring healing in our lives from all of these roots, all of these bitter seeds that have been planted in us. Uh, amen. Knowingly or unknowingly. And we just ask the Father tonight. We ask the Father tonight to bring forth healing. Mm-hmm. We ask the Father tonight to uproot every root of bitterness. Every root of brokenheartedness. Amen. 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 It, it, we need the Father to, to bring healing. To bring the uproot. Amen. And plant in the seed of Christ. And fill us with new life. Fill us with joy. Fill us with peace. Fill us with the life of God. Amen. So I encourage you tonight. I hope this was a blessing to you. I'm going to stop right here. Amen. I hope it was a blessing to you tonight. I pray that you receive the word of the Lord. I'm going to pray over each one of you tonight. Amen. If you, amen, are, are needing healing in your body, again, I have, amen, a prescription that I have given to Perfecting Life Church. Amen. I have given them a prescription that they can use the word of God. They can take a scripture and begin to pray the word over themselves and speak the word over themselves on a daily basis. And so if you want that and you need that, you can send, you can message me your email address if you, uh, amen, need one and I'll get you one. If you come to our services, then I'll have them available, amen, on Sunday as a part of our resource. Amen. Hallelujah tonight. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Let's pray because I believe God will pour in his healing anointing tonight. Father, we thank you. We praise you for your word tonight, Lord. We praise you, Father, for all that has been said and done in your name. Yes, please inbox me. Father, we pray in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, Father, that you will release, hallelujah, Lord, your anointing tonight that brings about healing, that brings about deliverance. Father, we can do nothing in and of ourselves. Lord, we can change nothing in and of ourselves. But Lord, we need your help. We need your strength. We need your power, Lord. We need your Holy Spirit. So Father, tonight, we repent, Lord, of all bitter roots. We repent, Lord, of all bitter roots down in our spirit, Father. And we ask, Lord, that you will bring uproot, uproot, Father, with your skilled hands, and your skilled ability, your skillful words, Father. We pray that you uproot every bitter root, every bitter seed, every seed of deception, every seed of hurt and bitterness and pain. Lord God, every, 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 Lord God, root of unforgiveness in our hearts and in our life. Father, we pray that you uproot it. Father, we release it. We release it. We're in your hands, Father. We belong to you. Lord, I pray that you will, now, Lord, as you have uprooted, Father, I pray that you will pour in your healing anointing, the salve of your glory, Father. Father, pour it into our spirits, pour it into our souls, Father, that we may walk in joy, in peace, in wholeness, in the name of Jesus. Lord, heal the brokenhearted. Father, I pray that you are making us ambassadors and you are sending us, you are sending us out into the world. Lord, to also be uh, healers of the brokenhearted in the name of Jesus. And Father, we give your name, the praise, the glory and the honor in Jesus mighty name. We thank you and we praise you. Hallelujah. Yes, we repent of unforgiving, uh, unforgiveness and we bind unforgiving spirits in the name of Jesus we rebuke and command them, go from the people of God. Hallelujah. Go from our house. Go from our life. Go from us in the name of Jesus. We declare that we are able to quickly forgive, quickly release, quickly let go in the name of Jesus. We just praise you and we thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for forgiving spirits, Lord. Hallelujah. And strength and joy in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. God bless you all tonight. Thank you so much for coming into the live. Amen. God bless you. Amen. We hope to see you Sunday. 
amen, uh, in our service at 10, uh, 10 a.m., amen, 3318 Millersville Road. Bring a guest with you. We will be serving communion on Sunday. So, uh, amen, we look to see you all as we partake in the broken body and the shed blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you tonight. Love you all. Amen. Have a great, wonderful rest of your night from me, Pastor Nick and Josiah. God bless. This is Apostle Carla McDougall with Carla McDougall Ministries. Amen. I am one of the ministries that broadcast on the Winning in Prayer Network. And I'd like to take a few moments um, to just share with you my experience and to share with you um, the benefits of being able to broadcast through a godly network. Amen. I'd like to share with you um, my experience of being able to express the heart of God and to be able to share the gospel with a diverse group of people throughout this earth to be able to advance the kingdom of God in the earth by way of preaching and teaching, by way of prophesying and even in some cases providing counsel as it were to some individuals to be able to release the word of God so that the unbeliever might repent and accept Christ as his or her savior so that the believer that the babe in Christ may be strengthened and may be able to grow um, and to grow in grace and to grow by grace and to grow up into the things of God so that the more experienced the more mature perfected believer will be able to be strengthened a man in their walk and along this journey so I am extremely grateful to God for the man of God Apostle Daryl and the woman of God Pastor Tammy Johnson who are visionary and founders of the Winning in Prayer Network it has been an honor it has been an extreme blessing to, to reach a diverse group of people throughout this earth and throughout this nation to be able to minister 
um, in a diverse way. Um, as you all know, for those of you who are preachers of the gospel, if you are considering to be a part of this great family of ministries, I would encourage you to do so. Amen. Um, as you know, as preachers, those of us who are preachers, we understand that our greatest mandate, that our greatest assignment, that our greatest task in this earth as preachers is to be able to publish or to demonstrate the word of God and to be able to do so in, uh, to a diverse group of people. The scripture reminds us, amen, that when we publish the word of God, when we publish the heart of God, we open up the earth, we create pathways and we create um, roads and avenues by which God's people can be drawn unto him. The scripture decrees and we declare that as Christ is lifted high above the earth that he will draw all men not unto him and to have this awesome opportunity to have this awesome platform that reaches throughout the world that reaches throughout this earth to be able to lift God up by way of word to be able to to lift up the Savior by way of the word so that with that same word God can draw his people not to him close to him draw his people into his bosom, um, cause his people to be a part of his family, that the spirit of adoption can be released and others be drawn in. I am eternally grateful and I am honored for the opportunity to be amongst such a great cloud of witnesses in this day's generation who are using this exact um, platform, this exact network to be able to publish the gospel for as many people for as many diverse groups of people that are in this earth there are that many diverse preachers of the gospel it gives each of us the opportunity to administer the word of God to God's people in a way that will not only draw them unto him, but will manifest the promises of God concerning their lives. This platform, amen, is one of the great God platforms by which we advance the kingdom of God, by which we are able to advance the righteousness, the peace, and the joy of the Lord in the Holy Ghost throughout this earth. It is a tool, a mechanism that God has allowed for his preachers and the ministers of the gospel to be able to reach magnitudes and multitudes and diverse groups of people that we otherwise will not be able to meet, that some of us will be brought into nations and into countries that we otherwise would have no experience with. So I am once again eternally grateful to God for the opportunity, a man to freely express without fear, without hesitation, the heart of God, the will of God, and the word of God concerning his people to be able to express the promises and to convey and to relay and to relate to the promises of God that the people of God, that they who confess will be able to be partakers of the promise. So once again, to Apostle Darrell and Pastor Tammy Johnson, I say once again, it's an honor and it is a privilege and I am eternally grateful for this great opportunity to use this streaming platform on the Ro on Roku TV, Winning in Prayer Network on Roku TV to be able to share the heart of God. God bless you. Once again, I am Apostle Carla McDougal with Carla McDougal Ministries. And I minister and broadcast on the winning and